is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God has given us the Spirit of His Son. Let us worship and praise Him. Hallelujah. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We say Psalm 134. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You by night stand in the house of our God. Lift up your hand towards the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm this evening is the first nine verses of Psalm 136 and it is found on page 777 in the prayer book it's found on page 777 Psalm 136 we will say it together oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. Who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. Who stretched out the earth upon the waters, for his mercy endures forever. Who made the great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule the day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars to govern the night, for his mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10. And the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two into every town and place where he himself was about to come. And Jesus said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and salute no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace shall rest upon him. But if not, it shall return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. 
heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. But wherever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it shall be more tolerable, tolerable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Here ends the reading. So we see how the accumulated urgency that is now taking place as we read in last night's reading how Jesus had set his sights on Jerusalem and so in a very focused way he sends out his emissaries to go ahead of him and to prepare his way. And then he makes the, the observation that there's much to do, the harvest is plentiful, but there are very few laborers. If we look at a, a cathedral of this size and visibility in the life of the city and of our diocese, it seems to function very effortlessly. When you come to church on a Sunday, there's always flowers fresh and beautifully arrayed. The altar servers are going about their duty. There are people handing out the pew leaflets. And all that is all visible to the eye. But there in the background, there's somebody who's preparing the vestments. There's somebody who cleans up here. There's somebody who prepares everything that we are the beneficiaries of. And that just on the matters pertaining to our worship. Today the Archbishop will gather in the elective assembly in, in Natal where they will seek the discernment to elect a new bishop. Again, a massive machinery has been uh, deployed to affect the gathering, to make it possible and hopefully by the grace of God to make the uh, election possible. But what we are emphasizing here is that the much that is being done and that will be done is but a few people. That is the nature of, of our society. It's the willing hearts and the willing hands. And what the dedicated individuals in any society will have to decide on why are you doing it? You have to be very clear about your motives, what compels you, what inspires you, and then act accordingly. But if you, if you do what you are doing and you ask who isn't here, why isn't anybody it will take away the joy of what you are doing. It will cause much frustration. So the few do what the majority should be doing. And hopefully in the course of that, we'll join the train, we'll come on board. But for now, in the spirit of this gospel, to do so joyously. And we thank God for the 12 disciples that became the gathering on Pentecost. We thank God for the willing hearts of 12 men and women who then become the emissaries that go out and prepare the way for God's Spirit to come upon us. And here we sit today. And there's much to be done. And we must ask ourselves, this time around, will I be numbered among those who volunteer? Amen. I invite you to say the baptismal creed which is found on page 59 of the Anglican prayer book. I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world I believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. 
believe and trust in his Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Today we are invited to pray for the church in Kenya in the Diocese of Putere and for Bishop Timothy Wabunya. In our own province, we pray for Bishop Luke Pretorius, Bishop of St. Mark the Evangelist. And in our diocesan office out at Brayhead in Kenilworth, we pray for the administrator, lay canon Charlene van Royen, and we pray for a team consisting of Ilda Manuel Cecchini, for the Bishop's Office Admin Support, Bridget Moses, the Executive Secretary, for the person responsible for communications, Rebecca Malambo, and for the Finance Department for Charmaine Johnston, Edna Joseph, Accounts Administrator. We are asked to give thanks for the dedicated work they do in running the affairs of the diocese, we pray also for the Diocesan Healthcare Fund for Natasha Peterson and for Lee Jane Bukas and their families as they continue administering our Diocesan Healthcare Fund. On behalf of the Diocese of Cape Town, Saldana Bay, and Falls Bay, we continue to pray for Walter Looning. We also pray for Peter Klatso, for Glenn Thomas, we pray for those who have received news that they will be vaccinated in the course of this week. We give thanks, and joyfully so, for the Colson sisters that they have successfully vaccinated yesterday. <laughs> and for those of our faith community that are still in doubt, Lord, we pray that you will give them clarity and strengthen their conviction. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Father, through Jesus Christ, our ascended Lord, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the bond of fellowship in the church. Unify the whole created order in Christ to reign supreme over all things with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We also commend to God's mercy and guidance our Cathedral Council as we meet tonight in a few minutes' time. And we also give thanks to our new member, Nolundi, as she comes on board. So, beloved, join me, me in, as we say, the evening collect on page 61. Lighten our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy defend us in all perils and dangers of the night for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. Good night, everybody.